Go ahead. Hey. hey, everybody. So uh, how many people here went and saw Sal yesterday? All right, so I thought that was fantastic. I thought he did a great job, and I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, one thing you're going to notice is there's a little bit of my stuff that's actually going to overlap with his. But uh, I think he went through it pretty quickly, so some of the stuff where we do overlap, I may still go through it and uh, maybe reinforce what you learned yesterday. It's definitely not a duplicate talk, but there's quite a few things in there where I was like, hmm, I'm going to be telling them about that. But uh, I won't be skating, and I don't have cool animations, and I don't have the logo, so, you know, you might want to just go to the casino now or something if you'd rather. But uh, anyway, hopefully we'll have some fun here. So the title of this talk is Turbocharger Mac Productivity. The first 90% of this is going to be all stuff out of the box that you can do today without spending a nickel and, uh, and get what you want. And then the last part is actually I'm going to spend some of your money, but it's well worth it, and I'll show you why. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I guess I should have done that on the mic, huh? <laughs> All right, I showed you guys yesterday slideshare.net slash nosilicast. You might need the word presentations after that. Um, I remember when I checked in at home, I sat there staring at the screen trying to figure out where the presentations actually were. So if you throw that in at the end, you've got a, you've got a fighting chance to get right to uh, the presentations when I get them up. Again, I don't promise that I'm going to have that ready, uh, you know, the day the ship lands or anything, but uh, pretty quickly after that, within a week or two for sure. So I wanted to start with some random finder tricks. And uh, I'm going to be flipping in and out as usual uh, to, the, to the finder. And so Sal had talked a bit about the um, ability to use Quick Look. And I wanted to do just a little bit of a quick thing here. In just about, with just about any application that you have in the finder, if you press the space bar, you can see into the file. You can click on different pages within the file. See. I use this every time, slideshare.net. So uh, you can walk through different pieces of a document, and you don't have to open it to be sure it's the right one. If you did want to open it, you could open it in Keynote, or uh, as Sal showed before, you can also uh, forward it into other uh, tools like Mail and that sort of thing. If I hit the space bar again, it's going to go away. I can go down to the next one, and this is actually a video that I'm playing right now. If I hit the arrow key, it's actually going to switch down to the next file, which is a JPEG image. So you can see I'm looking at PDFs, I'm looking at, at uh, uh, JPEGs, I'm looking at videos, looking at keynote files. You can look at just about anything you want with Quick Look. I use this absolutely all the time. It's one of the things that drives me crazy about Windows is when I want to go use it and it's not there. I might mention more than once that certain things uh, drive me crazy about uh, Windows, but we'll try to keep it at bay. Sal started talking about the app switcher, and um, let me escape out of this, and let's open up something else. Let's open up, uh, oh, Bean is my favorite word processor. So now I've got uh, Bean open, and I've got uh, Keynote open. I'm going to hold down the Command key and hit Tab, and you can see up on screen that you get the different icons for the different applications. So if I hit Tab again, I can go to the Finder, Tab again, go to Bean. I think if I hit Shift Tab, it goes backwards through those same things. So I'm flipping between the different, uh, the different applications just by holding down the command key and hitting tab. Oddly enough, this is actual, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to make fun of Windows, of course, but just in case you're a slider and you have to deal with Windows, I'm also going to tell you when it's something good that Windows does. Control tab on Windows does the exact same thing. So if you're stuck in that environment. Let's go back to Bean and let me open a second file. So I've actually, uh, oh, that might not work the way Bean's doing it in a tabbed environment. Let's go into Keynote and let me open up uh, another one of my keynotes. We'll open up the one you saw yesterday. So I'm going to have two, uh, two different files open here. If I do Command tilde instead of Command tab, I'm switching between the two, the two open windows within that application. So that's kind of a neat way to just flip back and forth if you're trying to move stuff between two presentations like I did today. Wow. So that one's kind of fun. Let's see, let's go back here. The, um, Sal talked some about moving and copying files. Oh, I do want to say one thing. Probably 32% of what I know about how to do it in my applications in Windows is because of Don McAllister. Uh, his screencast online videos, if you're not subscribed to them already, you ought to be. Uh, you, you definitely want to check them out, but it, it, he has this amazing talent at finding things that I don't see, even though I'm a pretty darn sophisticated user, I still learn a lot from Don. So one of the things uh, I was going to say was if you've got, let's say on our desktop here, we've got this productivity demo folder, I'm going to create uh, another folder, let me actually put that at that level, and I'm going to take this 
presentation here, I'm going to hit Command C and go over here and hit Command V, and I just copied the file. It exists in both places. I didn't know that for the longest time. I mean, maybe you guys all knew that one, but that was, that was new to me. Another thing you can do is if you hold, this is one I definitely learned from Don recently. I'm not sure this was already there. Option drag will copy a file rather than uh, actually moving it. So if I take this and I just drag it, it disappears from there and shows up there. You put it back. If I hold down my option key now and I do the drag, it stayed there and I just made a copy. And Don said the way to notice whether you're doing it right is if you hold down the option key and when you drag it, you see the plus button, the green ah. plus? That's what tells you that you're actually copying, not moving. So that one was worth the price of admission, right? Right there, you gotta love it. <laughs> Let's see what I got next. So this is where I'm gonna have some repetition with what, uh, what Sal uh, talked about yesterday. I call it taming the left sidebar. I use the left sidebar like crazy. And so I know he went through the mechanics of it. Let's talk about some of the kind of things you might want to do. I, when I'm working on something, as Sal said, I drag things into the left sidebar so that I can see them and, uh, and get to them very quickly. So in my finder, you can see I've got Mac Mania Australia 2012. Well, I needed to get in and out of this constantly, right? All the time while I was working on it. So I just dragged the folder in there. I, you can drag folders in there that exist in other places. It's just a pointer over to it. You're not actually moving it in any way. So, for example, you can see the little green checkbox on these. These are all, all files actually in Dropbox, but I was able to put that folder there in the left sidebar. Every week, I create a new folder for my podcast with the, name, the, the date of the podcast episode. I drag it in there so I've got instant access. When I'm done with it, I hold down the Command key and drag out and then let go when it says poof and it's gone. Easy enough to go get it back so you don't get terrified that you just lost it. You can take it and drag it back in. Now, if you're running, <coughs> I'm not sure if it was Lion or Snow Leopard when it was last this way, you didn't have to hold on the command key. But I think there was a lot of help support calls of people going, oh my god, I lost my file, I don't know what it is. So that's probably why they added the command key to that, so that you're, you have to take some positive action to drag it back out. Um, I put Dropbox over there, SkyDrive, don't tell anybody I've got Microsoft SkyDrive. Hey, they wanted to give me 25 gig free, I didn't mind. Uh, it works just fine. So I, I put a lot of different things in here. I even have, this is actually an Apple script, uh, actually an automator action that creates a, a certain kind of file for me, and I put it in the left sidebar. So just by a single click, I can trigger that. So hopefully that gives you a little idea of why you'd want to put things into the left sidebar. Go back in here. Can you overwhelm it? Can you overwhelm it? Well, it can get too long for your screen. You'd have to scroll. But again, I, I just drag things in and out as they're necessary. Since it's so easy, even if I need it, uh, I don't need it for three days, I might drag it out because I'm tired of looking at it or it's confusing me, that kind of thing. Um, you can also uh, drag things up and down. So like if I wanted to put uh, MacMania Australia below MacMania Keynotes, I could just drag it like that. Super, super easy. Can you nest those? Can you nest those? No, because they're real folders. They're pointing at folders. If you tried to nest them, I think you'd end up, uh, you'd actually drag it, the the lower level thing would get dragged into that folder. Uh, let's see. Oh, and as Sal pointed out about 200 times, I had never really thought about it that much, but the, the advantage of the left sidebar is that's also available in your save dialog boxes and your open dialog boxes. So that's really handy that you've always got those folders and things that you need when you get there. Um, I will be sad when I have to drag Mac Mania Australia 2012 out of my sidebar, though. <laughs> <laughs> He also talked about taming the Finder uh, toolbar, and I wanted to talk there about why I use it and what I use it for. Probably the single thing I use it for the most is an application called AppDelete from reggieashworth.com. AppDelete is an application that completely deletes a, an application for you. It goes off and finds all the little bits of, uh, of you know, P lists and all the little cruft that get left laying around and deletes it for you. Well, the best possible place for me to put that is in, the, in a finder window because whenever I'm in my applications, if I wanted to get rid of Artboard, I just drag it up and I could drag it right onto there and actually delete that application. So, Can you spell that one? Uh, it's app delete? App, A-P-P, D-E-L-E-T. -E -E yeah, D-E-L-E-T. It's, uh, it's not very much money. I forget exactly what it was, but it was, it's definitely worth it to keep things super clean. Uh, Macs don't get the cruft quite as badly as uh, you know the registry and Windows, but it still it feels better to me to just completely get rid of something and not leave little crufty bits laying around. So I'm I'm a big fan of AppDelete. There's a lot of applications that do that. AppDelete's my favorite, and Reggie Ashworth is 
possibly the most responsive software developer I have ever talked to. I mean, he just like he gets back to me within hours. It's he's really really good. Um, you can put commonly used files up there, and I had never really thought about a, a bad reason to do that. Is that's not available to you in your open save dialog box. But let's say you've got an expense report that you're constantly uh, putting your hours in a file that you're getting to all the time. That might not be the worst thing to have up there. That's not something you're going to do an open save dialog box with. You're just going to click on it to open it. And by the way, I do love the interruptions, so interrupt like crazy. How did you say you deleted the uh, so you moved the file over to the left to the sidebar? How do you get rid of it? The question was, how do you get rid of it again? You hold down the command key while you drag it out. Thank you. So if I'm holding command and I drag, it would actually, well, there. I thought it was like, it would go. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a change, and that threw a lot of people for a loop going, well, wait a minute, I used to be able to delete stuff, and all of a sudden you're, you are overwhelmed on that side. Thank you. So I'll talk a little bit about um, taming the toolbar on, on the top. So up here, if you hold down, uh, do a two-finger tap, or you do a control click or a right click on your mouse, you can go into Customize Toolbar, and this is where he was showing us yesterday that you can add different things. Um, if you want to have a new folder button, if you're tired of that, he showed putting the path button up there, which I'm actually going to do right now because I think that's kind of cool. You'll notice as I'm dragging it around, it's actually sliding things, these things over so that I can uh, put them anywhere I want. So now I've got that up there. He's talked about using labels. You can actually get rid of things. You can drag them down into here. Um, oh, one of the nice things is you can get the, the default set back. So if you just get this all horked up and messed up, you can just drag this whole thing right back up and you'll get it back the way it was. Um, and he also showed, you notice I've got the words underneath mine. I like to show icon and text. You can do icon only and make it a little cleaner. You can do text only, like he said, or you can go icon and text. So I find that pretty handy. I think that's a, that's a really, really nice feature to be able to mess around with that. Now I'm going to keep that path thing. I'll show you another way to do that, too. All right, when I, here's another great example of Don McAllister is, I never noticed this weird new button that showed up, uh, I think, was it a mountain lion, Don? Wasn't sure when that was. Which one? That when that, done? the arrange button showed up? It was in lion? I never even noticed it, but I'm watching one of Don's screencasts and go, holy moly, look at that button, that's new. I'm unobservant, I guess. So what I use that for, the problem it solves for me is, I very often want to see, um, I, li I like the uh, column view, but I, I, want, I don't want to see it by, by name, I want to see it by date, or I want to see it by file type or something like that. So if I go in here, and uh, let's say, let's go into Magnet Australia, there we go. If I go into Arrange, I can arrange this by date created, and it's going to show them to me in little chunks like that. So I'm still in this column view that I prefer, um, but I'm able to also see this in these different kind of categories. And you can take it, you can do it by, uh, well, actually, this is going to be kind of silly because they're all the same kind of thing. Let's see if I went into messages from Neil. So I could do it by kind, and you can see that I've got one folder and a bunch of PDFs in there. I, I really like that button, and I was very happy when Don taught me about it. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see. So kind open, yeah, date open, date added, date modified, date created. You can actually uh, check an awful lot of these different, different ways of looking at it. All right, conquering column widths. This is one probably a, a fair number of people know, but um, Maybe not everybody. So let's say I've got my column like this, and I'm trying to read what is that file name. If I position my cursor right over this line, you'll notice it changes into a different symbol. If I double tap there, it just expanded to be the exact width of all of the uh, of everything that's in there. So like it's the green button. what's that? I said it's like the green button in the uh, in, yeah in the corner there. Yeah, yeah that actually does the, the window. window. I know. I know yeah, what I mean, but it's the same similar. conceptual thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I knew that for a long time, but what's, what's interesting is the option key, and I'm going to do a whole bunch of slides all about what the option key can do, but what if you've got a bunch of columns that you want to change the, the width on? So let's go here and uh, let's shrink this down too small, and we'll shrink this one down too small. If I hold down my option key when I double click, they both changed. So it expands it all together. But you have to have your cursor on the line showing the parallel lines? Yes, you have to have your cursor right on that line when you're doing it. And, and when then it's, option. And then option, double tap. So one of the things I'm trying to do here is to take you from being maybe a piano player level on the, on the, on the Mac to being a pianist, where you're making it sing. You're just getting it to do what you want it to do instead of 
you know, giving in and doing what uh, what it wants to do, and, and you know, carefully dragging things around instead, just doing things a little more efficiently here. Is so, command and double click a second time will it compress? Uh, no, because I don't think so. Because it's it doesn't know exactly what it is you would want it uh, want to do. Uh, you're saying command double tap? No. Because I, I don't know how it would decide how messed up you wanted it to look. You know what was that? What was that with the one? I suppose it could try to get to a minimum level. So Sal talked a lot about finding things with Spotlight, and uh, I actually don't use the Spotlight search box in the upper right at all. And that's not to say that you shouldn't, or if you can remember all of those different. Mm -hmm. I believe my mic just went dead. Oh, they're gonna. Hear it I can keep talking. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. yeah. All right, I'll keep hollering. Tell it, let me know when I blow your eardrums out when it comes back. So uh, I just can't remember all of the different terms. I can remember kind, colon, and that sort of thing, but I'm just, I don't use it enough to have memorized every single one of those uh, different commands that, that he had. Okay, You're thank you. Whew, that was going to be hard if I had to keep doing that. <laughs> So uh, you, you, I, I'm just not that good at remembering all those things. So what I do is I use these uh, little buttons that show up here, and it makes it a lot easier for me to figure out. So let's see. Um, I have a crazy guy on my show who uh, contributes to my podcast a lot who calls himself Professor Albert. So I'm going to put uh, Professor Albert up here in my search box and put it in quotes. And you're going to see that I got an awful lot of different options here, a lot of places that I talked about Professor Albert. And that makes sense because he's on the show a lot. But what I can do is you see this plus button right here. If I hit the plus, I can say, now I'm searching Allison for Professor Albert, but I can say uh, kind is, uh, let's say, an image. And that just found an image that was in an email that had the word Professor Albert in it. So Professor Albert isn't embedded in this text anywhere, but you'll notice down at the bottom it shows that it's in my mail, and that's an email from the guy who signs his emails, Professor Albert. So it drove all the way down into my mail and went and found it, and found it, I would call that pretty stinking instantly. Um, this one's also a, a, an email that he sent me, uh, an image that he sent me in an email. So it's kind of interesting it was able to do that that quickly. Now there's a ton of options here. So as Sal was showing, if you go to last open date, for example, you can then say things like within the last seven days, exactly on such and such a date, before that date, after that. These, these buttons change in context with what you've chosen here. So you notice when I was on kind, the only option was what kind do you want. But when I'm on, on one of the date options, then I'm going to have all these different kind of date related options. If we look at, uh, ooh, modify, modify data is one, and name, we could even filter that down even further. We could, we could add more uh, context to it to do the search even further. So I, I use this all the time. I'm just not smart enough to remember all those kind, colon, space, where's the space, is it before or after, that kind of thing. So um, this is the way I do it, and it's accomplishing the same thing without having to remember quite as much, in my opinion. Um, as he said, you can also save the searches. Um, I create a lot of AIFF files every week, which are giant, uncompressed audio files. And after about a month, I delete them. So when I'm sure nothing's gone wrong with the podcast, I'll go ahead and delete those files. Well, by clicking on this, I'm able to see those are all the AIFF files that I haven't, uh, that I haven't deleted yet. Oh, no, that's interesting. I just double-tapped it and it shrank. Hmm. Single column. No, I have double-tapped it and it shrank it. Yeah, What's a multiple? The size you need it. No, but it's supposed to shrink it to fit the whole thing, and it's not doing it. Do it again. That's curious. No, it's, it's not. Watch when I double tap it, it's going back. Curious. Double tap on. I was option. double tapping on that line, and I was also option tapping, double tapping, and it wasn't. Uh, no, curious. Okay. Well, anyway, you can see if I if I right click or, or uh, two finger tap on that. I can show the search criteria and you can see what I'm searching for. I'm saying I want to find AIFF files that start with NC underscore because that's the name of all my files. I can go in and modify that and save it again if I wanted to change it. So I don't use this a ton, but every once in a while that's the, there's that thing that you need that you want to always be able to search for it. Once you build it, you click the save button in the upper right and you don't have to do it again. All right. Everybody asleep in the back? Okay, good. I'll try to keep my voice down. 
I'm crazy about gestures, and actually this is fun again with what Sal talked about, because Sal is clearly very into doing keystrokes, and I like a certain number of keystrokes, but certain things, I, I'm really worried about repetitive stress injury. So I really try to minimize the times that I click. I hate clicking now. I don't ever click on my mouse pad, uh, any, on my uh, trackpad, I should say, anymore, ever. I never click, because I've been able to turn on these gestures and learn them well enough that I don't have to anymore. So one of the things I've said a couple times is that I'm, I'm single tapping. So let's uh, actually, no, that's too hard to see. Let's go into, we're gonna go into the system preferences and go into trackpad. Now, if you're using a magic mouse, this gets kind of confusing because I think the magic mouse, from what I've been able to follow from other people, it's one fewer key, uh, fingers than whatever I say. So if I say use three fingers, it's actually two fingers if you're on a magic mouse. So I don't use a magic mouse, so I'm just gonna describe it in, in, uh, in trackpad terms. So take a look at it for yourself if you're using a, a magic mouse. So the first tab under trackpad is tap to click. I will not sit down at somebody's computer and tap once and not go up and change this so that I can't do this. It doesn't stop you from clicking. You can still click if you want to, but I like just being able to do a single tap. So I'm gonna tap with one finger, I select it, and now I have to click because I undid it. Whew, God, I hate clicking, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, the second one down is tapping with two fingers gives you contextual menus. So if I'm in here, like when I was on uh, AF uh, Nosilicast, I tap two fingers and I've got access to the contextual menu. I'm not having to right click, control click, any of that kind of stuff. I'm just lightly tapping with two fingers. So I find that to be a much gentler way to do it. One that a lot of people don't turn on, but I'm in love with is called three finger drag. You know, I can push with my finger nice and hard on that trackpad and I can drag it around. Or if I have this selected, I can simply gently let, put my three fingers on there and drag it around from the top of the screen. I love that. Drives me crazy that I can't do that one in Windows. <laughs> I just hate clicking, you know, I've just gotten completely away from it. There's, uh, any, any questions on any of those? No? Good. So if I go into more gestures, this is where you can really have a lot of fun. One of them is to scroll right or left with two fingers. Um, I can't demonstrate this because I can't get a web browser open, but if you, uh, well, I could open it, it just wouldn't do anything. So uh, what I'm gonna, uh, what you can do is with two fingers, simply swipe left and right, and it'll go forward and back instead of you having to drag your finger all the way up to that left arrow and click back. It's really a gentle movement. You can go forward and back. I think it works in PDFs and maybe a couple of other applications. The next one down is swiping left or right between uh, full screen apps. Why well, I've got, uh, let's see, does it count? Let's see. Well, you can get to the, to the right, you can get to your dashboard. Let me go back to uh, Keynote and put it in full screen mode. So now if I use the four fingers and I swipe to the right, I'm here. Swipe to the left, I'm back. So again, I'm not clicking, I'm not having a command tab, I'm just gently moving my fingers back and forth and I'm distributing those those motions that I'm repeating into different places. Sometimes I have to use my hands to my keys, but a lot of times I don't, so I'm able to flip back and forth. And uh, and anything that that interrupts that repetitive motion is what's going to save your uh, your uh, wrists and all that kind of thing for later. Now I'm not fond at all of the swipe from the right edge with two fingers on notification center, so I'm actually going to turn that one off now that I noticed it's a thing. Um, I just swiped in from the far right of the screen to bring, or, I'm sorry, the far right of my trackpad, actually off the trackpad onto it to bring it back. Now the reason I don't want to turn that one off is it accidentally gets triggered all the time when I'm trying to go back and forth in a web browser. So I'm actually going to turn that off because with a single tap I can also hit that to see the notification center. This is Mount Lion specific, of course. Um, I don't use these last ones that often, but if you swipe up with four fingers, you get to, uh, you can see all of your open uh, windows within a single application. So I could also just jump up here and then tap to go to Keynote, or I can, I can jump around like that, just going back and forth between them pretty easily. App, App Exposé, uh, swiping down with four fingers, that's showing me what's in the current app. So let me go to, uh, let's see, let me open B again, and we'll open a second, oh, that's the one that doesn't work fine. Let's go back to Keynote. And we'll open recent and bring up that one. So now if I go down, I can see both windows that are open within the same application. What I noticed in this, in Keynote in particular, uh, Keynote and Pages and Numbers all store your files up in iCloud, 
So I can actually see the other files that are also in iCloud. I can actually flip through these. I'm using two fingers again to swipe back and forth. I can see all these other applications. I, I'm sorry, all these other um, documents that are not open at this time but are actually uh, associated with this application. I'm not sure how out of control that would get when you've got thousands of files, but, uh, but it is there. The reason I don't use those two gestures as much is because I can never remember which one's which. So I'm always going four down, four up. Which one is it? Oh, I'm just going back and forth and it makes me kind of crazy. So I don't use it that much, but maybe your, your uh, memory is better than mine. If you pinch with the thumb and three fingers, you can look at Launchpad. And there's been some discussion of whether Launchpad is good or not, but if I wanted to get to Firefox, I just found out I could start typing it and it would show it up and I could hit enter and, and uh, launch that. So now I have a reason I might try Launchpad from time to time. Let's see, let's see, I'm guessing it's three, so it's uh, four fingers out to get it back. The one I do often is the thumb and three fingers spread straight out, that gets me to my desktop. That just gets all the junk off the desktop and gets you right in. That one's kind of fun, so out and in, out and in. So that one's a little bit easier to remember because you're taking your three, your four fingers, your three fingers and your thumb, and you're just going like that, like just get it all out of my way. So that one, that one's the one I can remember. So let's see. Allison? Yes. Uh, one comment. I have an older Mac Pro uh, with a trackpad. And it's an older Mac Pro with a trackpad. It's really quite flaky. The, it's uh, flaky. Uh, you, you mean MacBook Pro, I think. No, I mean a Mac Pro. Oh, but you have a, the stand uh, so you have the standalone trackpad. You that mean. is correct. And uh, the uh, action of the trackpad is really quite flaky. You might want to get that checked out because my track, my the external trackpad, it works just lickety splits, wonderful. Well, if you have a newer Mac Pro, that could explain it because uh, I've taken it into the genius <coughs> shop and uh, they just nod at their head or shake their head and say mm. goodbye. Okay, I don't know. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's keep going here. So these are the uh, these. This is a review of the things that I just showed you live in the demo there. All right, this is a really cool one. This is a, uh, Don probably taught me this one too. Let's, let's not kid ourselves where I get all my good stuff. So uh, have you ever been emailed a form that, that somebody wants you to sign and then they want you to fax it like an idiot from 1962? <laughs> like, I don't even know how to fax anymore. I don't, I don't know where the machine is. I don't, I, I'm not gonna do that. So uh, a, a perfect example of this, uh, we were in Hawaii with my daughter and she's buying a house and she told her realtor, do not send me anything between these two dates to sign because I can't get to a fax machine. So of course, her realtor sent her a form to sign and she was just apoplectic about it and I said, well, we have actually a way to do this. What you can do is uh, you can actually sign a piece of paper and hold it up to the camera and preview will say, oh, is this what you want to use as your signature and allow you to drop it in. This is so wow. cool. So uh, in, what you're going to do is you're going to sign a piece of paper, and in preview you click on signatures, and then click the plus button at the bottom. So you see this signature button here, you're going to click on the plus button, and it's going to bring up, your, your eyesight camera is going to turn on, and you hold the paper real still and move it around until you see your signature show up over here. It's a little bit flaky, I've had days where it just like, it goes boom, there's your signature, great. So I'm not going to do a live demo. Uh, but uh, it, it comes and goes, on, and it does seem to like a little bit thicker pen. If it's a real thin pen, it'll be kind of scratchy looking. It'll have a lot of gaps in it. But all you have to do is hold it up to the screen, wait till it comes up, and then click Accept. From then on, right up here in the toolbar in Preview is a button that you can press. You click that, then click where you want your signature to go, and boom, it drops it right in. It's, it's amazing, it works really, really well. And you can save more than one signature, so I can sign stuff for Steve now and you will never know that I'm doing that. Great. Let's talk a little bit about the doc. So could somebody steal oh, your signature? Could somebody steal your signature? Well, what I do after I drop it in is I print it out to PDF. Again, so when I've got the, the preview document up, I don't want that layer to be separated, and I'm not really sure whether it would or not, but just to be safe, I print that file out as a PDF, and now it's, it's just like if they had a piece of paper with your signature. Sure, they could scan it in, crop it out, and start doing things with it. It's no better, no worse than, than paper at that point. We like PDF pen for signing things. You like PDF pen for it. That's from Smile Software, PDF yeah. pen as well. Where is it in preview, the signature? So right up here in the, uh, in the preferences pane, the preference pane, it's the signature tab. Yeah, I didn't say that. Thank you. Yeah, forgot about that. There it is. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm not, a, I'm not a huge doc fanatic, but let's talk about the doc a little bit. Let's go back over here. Uh, actually, let me put this back in. We'll go to, and I'll use my two-fingered swipe to get back. Oh, why is it not? There we go. Get rid of that. So uh, right now I have my doc on the left-hand side, but I wanted to show you just a couple things if you haven't played with it. If you get your cursor around where that little... Uh, I don't know, it looks like the, the uh, crosswalk where the, the uh, beetles should be walking across is what I always think of. <laughs> but maybe it's because Don was talking to me about it when I talked to him. But uh, right around there, if you right click, you can show different things that you can do in your toolbar. I'm sorry, in your uh, dock. You, uh, actually, no, I did click in the wrong place. That's other things I can do. There we go, right on that, on that crosswalk. You can do things like changing whether your magnification is on or off and whether it hides on or uh, it hide is on or off. So right now, I, I, if I move away from here, that hides automatically. But let's say you just want it to show all the time. I'm gonna turn hiding off, and now when I click out here, it's gonna stay there. If I wanna change how big those icons are, I can change uh, uh, magnification, turn that on, and now you can see how they, they kinda jump out at me when I get to it. If you have trouble seeing, it's kind of nice to, to uh, be able to see uh, those, those icons get a little bit bigger. If I go into the preferences from there, I can change the magnification, jump those things. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, that is what I wanted. So if I close that now, when I go over them, they're <laughs> giant. That's kind of silly. We probably won't leave it like that. But that's the kind of options that you can set directly from there. So if you go into those dock preferences, you can set this to be just about anything you want. You can also change the position from the left bottom to the right. I find it irritating down at the bottom because our screens are nice and wide. Why do I want to waste some of the vertical space? So I keep it on the left-hand side in order to, uh, to actually get a little more space. Uh, let me turn uh, hiding back on. So that will irritate me to have it showing up all the time. All right, let's see if I covered everything on there. Oh, yeah, so another thing you can do is you can take documents and actually documents or applications and drag them in and out of the uh, sidebar. Let's go get, uh, don't say, oh, I wonder if that's why it was doing because I was editing that Smart folder at the time. Oh, yeah. we'll take this, and I'm just going to drag this file. Okay, sorry that, let me turn Yoink off. Where did Yoink go? Let me put, maybe, all right, we'll see that I can do this. If I get this down in here, I can take this document and I can just drop it into the, to, into the dock and now I can just simply click that once and, and get to it. Now, it used to be that you could drag it out, actually, sorry, you could drag it out and let go and it would disappear, but you'll notice it didn't really disappear. What they did here, and I don't know why they did it differently, in the sidebar you hold down the command key, you would think that would help you, but it isn't, you just go, oops, I keep hitting right clicking on it, sorry. You just drag farther until it turns into a little poof of smoke there, about higher where you can see it. So you see how it's got a poof of smoke now, but when I first dragged it, it didn't. So you just have to go farther to get it to work. <coughs> now that I think about it, I'm going to do a live experiment. Sal wor worked without a net, I'm going to do it. Let's put this here. I wonder if I held down the, the command key and dragged if it would do it. Oh, okay, that was good. I managed to drag <laughs> it in the sidebar. Let's not do that. <laughs> All right, yeah, so we dragged it till we see, see a puff of smoke, we're good to go. Another thing I wanted to show, and, and Sal's talk had already had this set on, uh, turned on, but at one point he pointed down to the bottom of his, his uh, finder window and he had the full path showing for a file that he had selected. And he also had it showing how many items were in that folder and how much disk space he had left off. Uh, had left, and that allows you, uh, you can't do that unless you have set that, toggled that on. I believe that's off by default. So let's go back here. If we go in Finder and go to View, right here you've got the status bar and the, uh, and the path bar. So notice that down at, down at the bottom here, this is the path I have showing. If I go to View and I say hide path bar, that disappears. So actually, I notice people are trying to look up like this. I'll bring it up a little higher. Is that easier? Yes. Yeah. All right. So um, yell at me if I forget to do that. <laughs> so if I go, show, again, view, show path bar, I can get that back. So this, uh, this path thing is really nice, and it's kind of cool because you can jump right to it. You could just say just jump to the PodFeed folder, but I can also do it from here. I can jump straight to the PodFeed folder by clicking on it. Oh, no, I can't. I thought, oh, there you go. Yeah, I can. 
So um, it's just another way to do the same thing, but I think it's a, a little bit easier to, to just have that available at all times. If you have a small screen, like you're on an 11-inch Mac, uh, um, MacBook Air, maybe you don't want that on because every every you know eighth of an inch is really precious real estate. So maybe you don't want to uh, turn that you want to turn that off. I want to know, be able to look at a glance to see how, where my disk space is, is hanging out. So where I do that is with the status bar. So if I uncheck that, it's gone. And if I recheck it, it's back. So that's a, that's a way to just get real situational awareness, instantly know whether you've got disk space left. It's something I want. Or like tonight, today, right before I left to come up here, I decided to back up my photos. Well, there were 192 photos in Aperture I was going to back up. And I started to back it up, and I said, okay, i got to get going. I looked, and because I could instantly see down here in the folder, I could see I'd only backed up 54 photos so far, and I knew it wasn't going to get done by the time I got back. So I was able to just instantly see, not have to do a get info or anything like that to see what was in that folder. So I definitely like to have that one on at all times. So I am a huge fan of the Get Info uh, button, the Get Info option. Get Info lets you learn about a file or a folder and learn about what's going on in it. And this is uh, pretty close to impossible to read, so I'll do that in a demo. But it's gonna, it'll allow you to see, uh, you can add comments to your file. So uh, the comments Sal was talking about that he was adding to the file, you can do that in here for searching. You can find out how big the file is. So certain kinds of files don't show when you click on them to the right. They don't show what the file size is, and I don't know what, what's up with that. But if you ever have a file, you want to know how big it is, you can do a get info to find out. You can find out how big a folder is, but it sometimes takes a while. You can also set what application opens the file in there and what application opens all files of this type. And uh, if your OS is yelling at you about permissions, sometimes you can get a hint in here. So let's go back to our folder here. Let's go, say, to this folder uh, and look at a file. So I'm going to hold down Command-I. And it's right here is the spotlight comment. So I could show, uh, I could write the word art in there. And now if I searched on art, it would find that file. It tells me it's a PNG image. It gives me the size in bytes, so 536 uh, kilobytes in this file. Gives me the folder path, which I'm kind of already sitting there, and that's OK. But created modified dates. You can add labels here. Um, let me fold these up so it keeps getting taller uh, towards the top. This will even tell you the size of the JPEG image. If you're looking to see, is that one of the big ones or one of the little ones I can afford to put into a PDF and not make a giant PDF Christmas letter, uh -huh. like somebody <laughs> talked about yesterday. Um, you can uh, change the name here. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can change it here. You can choose to hide the extension. You notice it disappearing right here. Watch when I show the extension again. You can do that. Um, a, a really important thing, probably the most important thing in Get Info for me, is the open with uh, dialog here. What I find is really, really often files, uh, music files always want to revert to opening in iTunes. And I might want to play them in QuickTime, because I just want to get, uh, get an idea of what, what the file is. So right here, you can change what that file is going to open in. And let's just be really goofy and say Google Chrome. Another thing you could do is you can say change all. So this is just changing that one file to open in Chrome. If you click on Change All, it's going to change all files on your whole computer. All PNGs will now open in Chrome. So I might want to put that back. <laughs> I do find that it, it, it undoes itself, though. Like the one I was talking about, like MP4s, I want to open in QuickTime. I just, or, or uh, no, it was AIFF files. I want to open them in QuickTime. And it's always going and copying them over to iTunes to drive me crazy, which is another reason I want to keep searching for those AIFF files, because I don't want those 400 megabyte files uh, uh, you know, being duplicated all over. Let me collapse this one. So you can also see sharing and permissions here. And I don't mess around in this very often, but it is a place you can see. If it says you only have read privileges here, that means you've got something wrong with your permissions on your file. So it might just give you a hint. But uh, that's sort of an upper division class that I'm not capable of teaching. So I'm going to go ahead and close that up. Let's see. Oh, oh, it's going to be another thing. There we go. Oh, here is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things in the world. I have gotten so lazy, I don't want to read to find things. I want stuff to just come to me. I want to, if I'm on a, a website and I know oh, I'm looking for something on that, on that website, I'm just going to hit Command F and type in what I'm looking for. If it's a document, I'm going to do Command F. I'm going to just search. I don't want to go have to look for anything and pay attention and read the whole darn thing. So one of my favorite tips here, actually, let's go back over and get out of that mode. Let's say I'm looking for, um, I want to find the, oh, here's a good one. I was having trouble with my fonts. 
Where was it here? I was having trouble with my thoughts that they were capital letters, and I couldn't figure out how to get it. And if I keep digging around in here, I, oh, it's in here somewhere. It's in format, insert. I can't remember where it was. If you tap on, on uh, help and I type in capital, look at, whoops, font capitalization. There it is. So you can get to any of your menus by typing in the search up there. Again, something that drives me crazy that I don't have on Windows because I can't remember where anything is there either. So for some reason, the location of this one always escapes me. I really was trying to find it when I did it on my own, but I find that using it, doing this is a lot easier. So I can even go all the way down and say, okay, I want to do all caps, and I can hit that and go straight into it. Uh, so it's a really, really easy way of finding things in your menus. And like I said, I'm just... Uh, I'm just too impatient to read uh, to get into it any farther than that. So you can use that in uh, any application in OS X will support that feature. Allison, for, yes. For extra lazy points, you can do command backslash and I'll go straight into help. Ex he said for extra laziness points, we can do what? What is it? I I, I want to learn this. Command backslash and it works in the cross all the apps. So right now or before I hit help? No, before you hit help. So you're, okay. You're looking at your fonts and you're thinking, oh, it's not right. Uh, to work, hmm. It's not doing anything. Right, try slash then. Ooh. Okay. I think I just duplicated this file. It just changed it to edited. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Two is better. Sorry. Option? Uh, I'll, I'll work yeah, find it. Find it though. I want I want more laziness points, definitely. <laughs> if I have to do less, it's always good. All right, so my my eyesight isn't quite what it used to be and uh, I actually had some ergonomic specialists come to my office to figure out why my shoulder was hurting me. The back of my shoulder was just killing me all day, every day for a couple of years we fought with this thing. And they brought me a different keyboard, they changed the orientation of my monitors, they took the, they took the armrests off of my chairs. They could not figure out what was, why it was still hurting. I, I studied how I opened the door in the car, was it the way I was pushing it open? Was it the way I was crocheting sitting in my chair on the couch? I just checked everything. And I finally, actually I give Steve credit for this, he said, why are you pushing your computer so far away? I was pushing it farther and farther and farther away, so my arms were out at, outstretched everywhere I was. I was just backing up. So I've now told the ergo guys, look at the age of the person you're helping if they say their shoulder hurts, because there might be something else going on. I had not yet started to wear reading glasses. So here's a way to not get your reading glasses out, though. A couple of different things. Command Plus in web browsers and in mail and a couple other things will actually increase the font size for you. Uh, let's see, I can launch Chrome but uh, I'm not going to be able to do anything in there, but I think you'll be able to see it. There we go. So if I hold down the command key and plus, you're going to see things getting bigger and bigger. So it's kind of a nice way to go back and forth if you just can't read, you know, some cute little teenager with their eight-point font on, you know, gray on a dark gray background. Yes. <laughs> Snots can't wait till they lose their vision. Anyway, uh, if you want to get it back to where you started, so that was command plus and command minus to just go up and down. If you had command zero, it goes back to the way it was formatted originally. So if you get out of sync, you can jump it back like that. So that command zero, I just uh, just figured that one out last week. And no, Don did not tell me that one. I did that one all on my own. Uh, maybe he did. I don't know. Um, another thing you might have noticed, did you notice Sal was zooming in and out? And he was yes. going like this? Yes. Did you wonder how he was doing that? Yes. <laughs> Want me to tell you? Oh, yeah. So if you hold down the control key and scroll, scroll up, and then I'm, I'm moving my cursor to the edges, and that's making it scroll. So that's actually a feature that you need to turn on, I think, under uh, System Preferences. And I think it's Accessibility, right? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snake something from one of my other slides. I'm too lazy to look for anything in System Preferences. Let's just type in Accessibility. And boom. Another wow. search trick right there. So Zoom is, uh, let's see, here it is. So use scroll gesture with modifier keys to zoom. So I've got control scroll is what that's doing. So again, I can scroll up and down. And uh, I think there's something in here. Is it under more options? Here, it says only when the pointer reaches an edge, let the screen move. So you can do that, or you can say continuously with pointer, and that's kind of going to make you irpy if you keep doing that. <laughs> a bad phrase to use on a boat, so we won't do that very often. But just getting, it's really annoying when it does that. So. Um, I, uh, I keep it on when the pointer reaches an edge. So if you get, uh, again, we'll, uh, we'll make that nice and big for everybody to be able to see. So that was an accessibility, zoom, and then uh, we turned on use scroll gesture and more options. Well, that was a lot. 
<laughs> that's in my charts for you, because that's going to be uh, that's going to be tough to find later. Oh, somebody found voiceover. Cool. <laughs> Want to know how to make it stop talking? <laughs> command. Uh, I think it's Command Five. Let's see. No, no, it's F five. Command F five. There you go. So it's Command F five. Command F five. <laughs> this sounds familiar, Allison. <laughs> so I, live I actually with this. do a, a speech I call uh, Blindfolded, where I teach how to use uh, uh, voiceover on the Mac, which is why I knew exactly what he did and how he got into a bind. Is it really not stopping? No. Turn there we the go. sound down. <laughs> yeah, mute works too. <laughs> you have so trouble navigating, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, you get navigating, it gets real weird there too. So, uh, oh, I did. Oh, look, I did show you universal access options only when the pointer reaches an edge, and uh, so you do have it in the in the uh, documentation there. Yeah. Right. I figured that one mistake. Okay. I think of it as a slash key, but it's also the question mark key. So it's command shift to get the question mark. Okay, so it's the question mark gets you to help. So uh, command question mark. Nope. Shift. Man, shift question mark. Okay, to get to the question mark. That's what you said. Ooh. Ooh, Don didn't even teach me that. Nice. I just learned that now. Oh, good. good. So one of the things I like to say to people, I think I said it yesterday, was no matter how much you know, somebody knows more. No matter how little you know, somebody knows less. So keep helping each other. Excellent. I think I'll remember it better because you had made a mistake because now it will be stuck in my brain there. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm trying to cover for you. All right, I already showed this one off where you can actually do search right up there. Ooh, I wonder if we can use our new trick. Go to system preferences. Can we do command shift? Oh, it actually starts with it already up there, so we don't have to use that. Darn. All right, we're going to go to an advanced section here. Do you ever want to be like the cool kid that puts the uh, posture or the, the uh, um, Exante, uh, the Exante U in Eclair so that it has the right accent so it looks all cute, cool or you got a friend named Renee and she's always got it in her name and you're trying to figure out how she did it. This is with a thing called the keyboard viewer and this is kind of complicated to get it set up but once it's set up it's pretty easy to use. So we're going to open system preferences we're going to go into language and text and we're going to turn on the keyboard and character viewer so you're actually going to get two tips for one out of this. So uh, it's actually on the input sources tab. So let me, I'm going to go back and forth a little bit. Let's get our system preferences open again. So where did I say? I said language and text. I'm going to go there and input sources. And we're going to turn on keyboard viewer. Watch up here when I do it. You're going to see this weird little strange icon show up that has no meaning. So that's up there now. Now we can get down to see the keyboard viewer. So if I go to the keyboard viewer, what you're seeing, let me get this out of the way, like this. And uh, if I hold down, say, the Option key, watch the E, see how it's got a little accent above it? What you do is you hold down the Option key and you hit E twice. The first E puts the accent there, the second E puts the E. So you hold down Option, E, and then E, and it'll give you an, uh, an E with the, uh, the accent on it. You can see right here, that's where the umlaut, key, the umlaut is, and nicely they put it over the U, so that one's option U, U. That's actually available to you at all times, whether you have the keyboard viewer showing or not, but I like it there when I'm sitting there going, oh man, now this time I've got to have some other crazy character. If you need to start holding down keys to see what they do, so I'm holding the option key down, option shift gives me some different ones, you've got all kinds of crazy stuff you can type. Come and, and, and if you notice when you do do the options, some of them are red, because that means it's a dead key that uh, you have to push something after it. To... Oh, okay, so yeah, he's saying uh, that the uh, this this orange highlighting tells you those are ones that you hit something and then you have to hit something else. So I could hit this key and it would do it immediately, but with this one you've got to hit it twice. So you've got to hit uh, uh, option U and then U again. I love that. Makes you look all sophisticated. And I, by the way, I would like to know where to do that in, in, uh, in Windows. So, uh, actually, let me get on this. Do you use symbols or special fonts? Yeah, and I, I found totally it once, and I finally I wrote to Renee and said, no, I'm not going to do it anymore. Uh, I think it's all plus a three-digit number or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last three digits in your social security number or something. <laughs> yes, question? Why wouldn't you use the holding down the E key until the money pops up? 
Uh, that that works on iOS. That doesn't work on the Mac, does it? Yes, it does. Oh, man, that's awesome. I did not know they had that. We'll take that. Why did you do that again? Okay, so all I did was, I, all I'm doing is I'm pressing E and holding it down. So watch, I'm going to press and I'm still holding and look, it came up there. It looks like you can type like a one, two, three, or four, too. So I can hit a two. Ooh, this is fun. Well, how come it doesn't go E? What if you yeah, want multiple yeah, E's? Well, they took, they took that out. Uh, I know, I, I, now I'm just learning that they did it not in OS X, but I know in iOS, you just can't do a repeated key anymore. You don't have the option. Do you, Copy and paste. I mean, you can go E, 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 E if you want to, but you can't press it down like your exclamation points at the end of your all caps screaming at somebody on Twitter. <laughs> I, I, maybe that's why they did it. <laughs> I don't know. I think X space bar works. Okay, good. Oh, X works. No. 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 Well, that was cool. Who needs this other stuff I'm teaching? This is great. No, this is so much fun. All right. Uh, let's see. So this is where I walk you through. So you've got the graphics, so you can find this later when you're going. What did she say? So you're going to add another entry on this page. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to have to keep updating my charts, aren't I? I go to the system preference to turn it on and off, though. You think so? Go to system preferences and. Okay, I tell you what. Why don't, why don't you guys do it while I keep going? Because I got to make sure. Let's see how am I doing my time. Coming up on an hour. We're doing. We got a lot to do, so I'll, I'll keep moving. You may figure that out. So um, the other thing you can do, uh, this does show you with the um, option shift K, you can get the Apple symbol. You ever see people putting that in and it's all yes. cute? Uh, yes. But you're never going to remember that. So the way you're going to get to it is you're going to go to your keyboard viewer. Well, of course, you got to keep trying these until you get to option shift, and there it is, and that's the K. Where's the command key symbol? Oh, that's, that's, one. that's command. Oh, to make that one? Right. Actually, um, I think it might actually... Well, you have the green ones on there that yeah, you can see what it was. Go ahead and you'll see the, the uh, control keys are lit up. See? There's the option. And yeah, but no, she's right, saying right. if you want to put the squirrely command uh, this icon in. And I think, hang on just a second, but I think it's altogether possible my next chart shows you how to do that. So in the character viewer, so yeah. remember we got two things for one. We got a character viewer and a keyboard viewer. If we go into the character viewer, you can actually find these characters. But they're hard to find. You have to you have to kind of go through and look at, at you know pictographs, currency symbols, you have to keep looking for them. So whoops, oh it's changing that. I see. So you can go through and try to find it. Once you find it, which I even forget where it was, what you can do is you can choose to favorite it. So when I favorited it, now I have it there. So let's say I'm in I'm in the text field here. I can just take this and can I tap it? No, I have to drag it. I can drag it down and now it's in there. Now I'm sure there's probably a character for that, but or a keystroke, but I'm never going to remember it anyway because I don't do it that often. Pop chart. Pop chart. Yeah. Pop chart. Yeah. You're okay. saying a word in, in Klingon. Uh, <laughs> 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 that little key in the corner of the screen. Great little application. Oh, okay. Third party app called Popchar. Yeah. Probably Pop Care, huh? Yeah, right. Okay. But spelled C H A R. Maybe yeah. you do that. Okay, but I promise you'd be free into the last segment. So uh, let's see. So we did that. There you can save your favorite character, and from there you can drag it right in like we showed. All right. Um, there's a couple of just random little tips that didn't fit into any of these categories I wanted to show you. Um, a lot of people are switchers from Windows. It really bugs them that there's no delete key. And I never understood that. I mean, how hard is it to put your, cur your cursor in the right place and hit backspace? Didn't think it was that big of a deal. And until I started using Windows a few years ago, I was like, man, it really does come in handy. Turns out if you hold down the function key while you hit delete, it is a true delete key. So if you've been missing that, you can have it with function delete. Another thing I like is um, you can command right arrow to click to the end of the line, command left arrow to get to the back. So let's say I'm right here and I want to, uh, my cursor's here, but I want to write something down at the end. I'm going to hold down command and hit right arrow and it jumped to the right. Command left arrow, it's going to the back. Yeah, you use that a lot? Yeah, once you get into that one, you're going to love it. I think there's some other things you can do. Ooh, command shift right arrow apparently selects the entire, I knew that. Command shift left right arrow will select your entire line. That, that's just a little random tip that I just, I just love that one. All right, the great and powerful option key. I'm going to have to speed up. I've got a lot to talk about still. 
So anytime you're in a menu and you just, I don't know, you're bored or you're looking for something, try holding down the option key. You would be amazed at how many things change when you hold down the option key. For example, on, uh, if you're looking at your Wi-Fi signal and you're looking for your uh, Wi-Fi hotspot in your house, uh, it'll look like this. But if you hold down the option key, it's going to give you all this other glop about your, uh, your router. I don't know what any of that means, but it looks cool, and I bet uh, John F. Braun knows what it's for. So you can take a picture of that and send it to John when he's answering your question. Uh, another spot, I use this one all the time. If you use the uh, tap on the speaker icon, all you get is the volume. That's all you can do. But if you hold the option key, you can actually change your input and output source. So you've gone into Skype and it's got the wrong, uh, it's got the wrong input or output, you can just hold down the option key. So, oh, you know what, the resolution's so low, I can't actually see my, uh, you know, let's see if I go into the finder, can I see it? Uh, yeah, there we go. So you can see if I just tap on it there, that's all I've got, but if I hit the option key, it's gonna show the other options for input and output. Use that one all the time. I actually have an app called uh, Soundflower, I think it is? or sound source that gives me that, but you know, I stopped using it when I realized I had it built in, I could just option tap on that, on that menu. Another spot, uh, and I have to give Don credit again, um, <laughs> command I gives you uh, get info, command option I gives you something slightly different, it's called the inspector, and they look the same, but one of the, the main things about the inspector that's different is it allows you to flip through a series of files. So let me go back to my finder, and we'll go into my desktop, let's see, productivity demo. So if I do a command I, I can do a get info. And, but if I hit uh, the down arrow, nothing happens. If I hit command, command option I when I open it, now if I hit the down arrow, see how it's jumping through each of the files. Huh. Oh. Isn't that cool? Good job, Don! <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was cool. And he, what did he call it again? It's called the inspector when it does that. Does it have anything different in the menu? Uh, looks the same. Pretty much the same, huh? Looks the same. Okay, yeah, it looks like the same stuff. Oh well. Only Don would know the name of the window that it opens up because he pays attention. Didn't actually invent it. Right? You didn't invent it, okay. <laughs> but discovery. So. Apple is really getting into the mode of, don't you worry your pretty little head about this, we'll take care of this thing for you now. You don't need to know about icky things like your library folder. Even though a lot of really important stuff's in your library folder that you need to get to. So there's about 162 different ways to get your library folder to show. But um, the one I'm fond of, uh, Sal showed us yesterday the Go menu. Watch what happens if I hold the option key. Do you see library in there? Nope. What if I hold the option key down? Yay! I don't know about you, but I seem to need this pretty often. There's stuff in uh, application support, that's where there's, uh, like if you're backing up um, a database, for example, I use an application called DVDpedia, and I realized when I, when I rebuilt my OS, I said, okay, I don't want to bring all that junk with me, so I did a clean install, and then I loaded my applications, and I opened DVDpedia, my entire library was gone. It's a, it's a database that lets you uh, track your DVDs. And uh, they said, oh, well, it's in your application support folder buried in the library that Apple doesn't want you to see. So, or mess with. Or mess yeah, with. Well, don't be tight. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to get too crazy in here if you're not familiar with what things are. Be gentle. Be, be cautious. <laughs> uh, but if you're looking for something and somebody like John F. Braun says, well, just go into your library application support folder and pull up your P-list and blah, blah, you know, then at least you know how to get to it. Or if you call Apple's, Apple's uh, care or support, they if you call, go to it. Oh, if, if you call you know, Apple care, they're going to tell you to go to the library. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they know about the option key. Uh, yeah, they do if you ask. Okay. They assume that you know how to get your library. Yeah, well, I think it's irritating to everybody, but I mean, I guess it's, it's all well and good that if you're sophisticated enough to need to go to your library, then you're going to know how to do this. So that's just a quicker way. There are a bunch, uh, bunch of other ways to do it. One of the things I did was I just said, okay, forget it. I put it in my left sidebar. <laughs> I don't want to have to go looking for it. Now I have it at all times. All right, bonus time. So up to here, everything's been free, everything's been built in, so you've gotten about 162 tips of things wow. you can do for free. Well, I don't know, it was probably 28. It was more than Sal, I'm sure of it. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> no, that's not true. So, is he still here? <laughs> uh, anyway, what I want to talk about next is an application called Text Expander. Uh, how many Text Expander users have we got in here? All right, enthusiastic hands up. I should tell you, I'm going to show you again at the end here, but uh, Jean McDonald from Smile Software is actually here. She is not paying me to tell you this. 
Um, if you've been listening to my show for any length of time, I was advertising for them, but I am not now. And you can tell I really believe in it because I'm going to tell you about it anyway, even though I'm not advertising for them. So um, let's talk about the problem to be solved. Again, I worry about repetitive stress injury because I'm on, the, I'm on my computer all day at work, all day at home. I just hardly ever let go of it. Maybe to uh, you know say hi to Steve once in a while, I'll stop typing. But the rest of the time, I'm playing on my computer. So uh, you really want to find ways to reduce your repetitive stress. And uh, you also, if you're in this class, you came here because you want to learn how to be more efficient, right? That's the whole reason for sitting through this particular one is to get more efficient. And this is going to make you significantly more efficient than you are today. The tool text expander is designed to allow you to type just a couple of characters and to have a whole bunch of magic happen, have a lot of characters spit out, fill in forms, all different kinds of things. So I'm going to walk you through a bunch of the different ones that I do. And by the way, I am not by any means a high-end text expander user. I use it a lot but I don't use it for a lot of its advanced features. So I'm getting, guessing there's people in the room who could go, well, Allison, did you know you could do this? Did you know you could do that? So I'm gonna show you the one uh, that, uh, the kinds of things I do. A quick little example, I type text expander all the time. I type the word. So I type in T-E semicolon and text expander spits out. So you can just type a couple of characters and you're gonna get a sentence, a phrase, a word. Uh, I like to start with a uh, problem to be solved. So I'm gonna think of, just talk a lot about what you might wanna do with it first and help you get your brain ready for what you might want to do with it. So think about phrases or information that you type over and over and over again. I type my name all the time. I type NM semicolon and out spits Allison Sheridan. It's got a lot of characters. It's a lot of, it's a pain to write. Your address, your signature, uh, let's say you're in customer service. I work with a woman who has to deal with customer service and she just, you know, she's getting that edge where she's real tired of talking to these people. <laughs> and so she's got to write an email that says, thank you very much for your inquiry into our services. And I told her, just write some really obnoxious phrase as your snippet, and then the nice thing will come out. <laughs> and she loves it. And she's saying what she really thinks, but it's coming out. <laughs> it's a way to go. Uh, filling in information on forms. Um, actually, this, this is going to be kind of comical. I'm going to walk you how to, uh, through how to do this. But you know how logging into ship Wi-Fi, you have to type in your first name, then your last name, then your room number, then your password, then hit the button, right? It's kind of a pain. You're doing it all over and over again. Well, I was bragging to Gene last night, yeah, I just use text expander for that. I type FN for first name and LN for last name, and, you know, and, and I go through it like that. And she says, why didn't you have it fill out the whole form all at once for you? Because <laughs> I didn't know it could do that. I mean, I've watched Don teach it, but I forgot it could do that. So this morning, in about 10 minutes, I was able to figure out how to do it on my own. So it's that easy to get the hang of that I was able to figure it out, and I had never done this kind of thing before with it. And Jean's going to kill me for not having done it before, but, you know, she's got David Sparks and, and, uh, and Katie Floyd are better users than me, but we'll work on it. Text expander... Oh, is the very first thing that I load on a new computer because I will not work on a computer that doesn't have a Mac that doesn't have it. So uh, it is the first thing I do. So what we're going to do, I mean, let me talk a little bit about setting your preferences. And this is by far not an exhaustive list of things you need to set up. Uh, it's going to be all up to you. But you know, under the text expander is a little bit of an odd program. Let me just show you what it looks like. Uh, oh wait, 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 there we go. When you go into Text Expander, you'll notice that there's no menu up here. That says Keynote. So you don't actually have a menu to get here to get to your preferences. You get to the preferences right here. So you're going to go into Preferences. And uh, I set it to Launch at Login. Let's go back to full screen so you can see what I'm doing here. I set it to Launch at Login right here. I like to show it in the menu bar because a lot of times I like to tap on it and do follow certain menu things that you can do in there. Um, and I also show it in the dock. You can choose not to show it in the dock if you don't want to. Um, if you have it in the dock, it allows you to, to uh, and it's running, let's see, oh, I don't have it in the dock right now. If you have it in the dock and it's running, I think that's what allows you to use command tab and switch to it to do something. So, you know, that's a, that's a preference you can set. Again, there's a lot of preferences in here, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but that's kind of just a couple of things to start with. So let's create our first snippet. What you're going to do, uh, let's say we want to create the name. So I'm going to, let me switch over to the finder. I'm going to Text Expander, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up a snippet to write my name. So you're going to click on New Snippet, and up here you're going to type the thing you want to have typed out. So I'll put in my name, and then I'm going to type in uh, NM semicolon. And let me make sure, oh shoot, hang on, let me delete this one. And then that will stop turning orange. If it turns orange if you've used the same thing twice. So all I did was I typed the thing I want to type up here, 
and then I put the uh, abbreviation down here. Now you'll notice I'm using semicolons. That's because I've never been clear on exactly what they're for. <laughs> so I know I'm never going to use one in a sentence because I'm not really sure when. I mean, and, and don't send me that graphic that explains what it's for. Everybody has after I tell them that. It's really funny. Explains what they're for. But uh, anyway, once I've done that, now I can go uh, up to, let's see, let's go back in here. And let me come out. If I hit character turn, I can say FN semicolon and my name's fit. Oh, I did FN, that's the first name. Sorry, and M semicolon, and there's my name. So how often do you write your name? About 200 times a day, right? Why, why, not, why do you not do three characters? Now, if your name's Bob Smith, maybe that's not so bad, but I also shared a lot of characters. It's a real pain. I don't like having to, having to type it. What happened to the beep? What's that? I didn't hear the beep. Oh, he didn't hear the beep. Steve hates the beep. <laughs> drives him crazy. I don't know. If, let's get the mic on here. This is what drives my husband crazy. Did you hear it? I hear that thousands okay. of times a day. He hears it thousands of times a night. He's like, stop that beep. It drives him crazy. So I keep it on. <laughs> All right, good. Well, I actually muted this because you were in the room earlier, and I wasn't, I wasn't annoying you on purpose today. So you can see how easy. There we go. All right, you can see how easy it is to do just a normal snippet. Um, and, and I do those all day long. Um, I, as I mentioned, I have um, the, my naming convention for the way I write the, uh, the episode number for my podcast. So um, let's see, what is it? It's NC semicolon, I think. Oh no, that's no silicast. Boy, I'm doing a brain dump right there. I can't remember what it is. Anyway, one of the things you can do with uh, Text Expander is you can open your last snippet. Your last recorded snippet, actually, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm paralyzed here because I can't see it in the menu bar because the screen resolution is so low. In the screen resolution, or in the, uh, in the menu bar, you can pull down and say, open last expanded snippet. So I use that a lot because I have this snippet that I'm changing every week to just be the last two digits of that, of that code that I've written. So that's kind of a, kind of a neat little extra trick. But let's go, let's talk a little bit more about things you might want to expand. I do words that either are camel case or my brain thinks they might be. My text expander has that E in the middle. Well, again, I write it a lot, but I also I'm saying, what is the E capitalized or not? Facebook is the B capitalized or not? Dropbox is the B capitalized or not? WordPress, oh, the P is capitalized. I don't remember any of those. I just type all of those and, uh, and it does the ca camel case, by the way, is where it has a capital letter in the middle. Technically, that's not camel case. I know it's not supposed to have a leading cap, but you get what I mean. I also do it with things that are annoying to spell. My uh, um, uh, partner on my show is a guy named Bart Bouchatz. Look at the spelling of his name. I've known him for five years. I don't think I've ever spelled it correctly yet. So I set up a snippet, comma, BB, and that's how I spell his name every time because I have no chance of spelling it correctly otherwise. Things like Disk Inventory X, you know, oh man, I, I talk about that a lot on my show and it's just a real pain. Or Blu-ray, is there a dash between the blue and the red? Google Plus, where's the plus key? Oh, too much work. Uh, also, things that I just type all the time. I type no silicast, no silicastaways. That's the name of my, uh, we'll call it a fan club. The crazy Uber people that really like the show are called the no silicastaways. And so, you know, spelling that, that's a lot of work. On uh, my email address, I spell that all the time. I also do it for temporary things, just like putting things in the left sidebar because you're going to need them temporarily. I do that like when I'm writing a review and it's an annoying name of a, of a product. Because sometimes, again, is it upper, lowercase, are the two words squished together or whatever, I never know, so I use it for those temporary things. So I mentioned that I use semicolon, uh, semicolon. that's called the trigger, the thing that actually makes it happen. You can have uh, text expander start expanding as soon as you type it, or you have to hit a trigger. There's two ways to do it. I prefer to use a trigger and control it, um, but you could have it where if you typed NM, it would instantly expand that. I like it to have the trigger, so I put the uh, semicolon on it. You can put something after or before as a trigger. So a lot of people use a comma. Like I said, I use comma BB. I don't know why that one's not BB semicolon, but it isn't. Uh, so a lot of people use the comma beforehand, and they seem to like that as well. Uh, and again, there's a ton more options to play with. Yeah, question. What would you do if you actually want to type NM semicolon? Like that? <laughs> You're out of luck. In spell catcher, you do a shift, uh, a shift space after it. How, how do you do it in this? Uh, that's interesting. Well, I do it a couple of different ways. Um, what I'll do is NM space semicolon, then back up and erase the, <laughs> the space. Okay. That's one way. I did notice today when I needed to type it, uh, type something, I put it in quotes. Let's see. 
And that seemed to mess it up because the, I think it's the leading quote that probably said, well, that's not really an M semicolon, it's something else. So that's two ways to do that. There you go. Can you use it for uh, user IDs or passwords? Can you use it for user IDs or passwords? Um, it would be a good idea for you, a user ID. I would not recommend it for a password. Um, I'm actually going to do show you how to do it for a password today because that's what Jean did, uh, and, and when she taught, told me I should be doing it. Uh, but they don't recommend it for passwords because that's going to be that text expander file is unencrypted on your hard drive. Somebody could get to that. They look for the word password. Ooh, there it is. So I wouldn't recommend it for that. Alice, yes. There's one other thing as well, which is the, uh, the snippet libraries that come with it. One oh, oh no, don't one. take my next. She's <laughs> done. Can't even <laughs> get the. Shh. Pay no attention to what Don just said. Uh, <laughs> Actually, there may be more than the one I'm going to talk about. I'm just talking well, about if, the one. If you missed the one, I'll tell you. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, tough having the teacher in the class. <laughs> All right, so as Don just snaked from me here, uh, Tidbits has created a set of autocorrect uh, snippets that allow you to not misspell words. There are 2,479 commonly misspelled words. By the way, I misspelled the word misspell. I put, I put uh, what is it, I put one S in it or something, and it fixed it for me when I, was, when I was typing this in. So these things will be automatically corrected for you. It's a, a really, really nice feature. Um, it's easy to add, you just use the plus button. Uh, actually, I just wrote at the top of the screen. I think it's actually the bottom of the screen. Let's see. Um, yeah, uh, here you go. Add predefined group. I think this is where you go. You can go get this. So at the, I, I said at the top, it's really at the bottom. Add predefined group, and there's the Tidbits Autocorrect Dictionary. I would believe you probably have to be connected to the internet to go do that. I'm pretty sure that's where it comes from. I don't know why they give it to us for free, but they do. You get that for free, and you can get rid of it if you don't like it. Um, it works. It works really well. So I'm I'm a fan because uh, I, as we mentioned, I'm lazy. Some things. One of the things I set up in it was um, for some reason I don't like capitalizing the letter I. Like if I'm just going to say I was going to the store, I just don't capitalize it. I don't know why. So I set up Text Expander to do it for me. So I can stay lazy and Text Expander makes me not look like an idiot with a lowercase i. Another thing uh, that you get with Text Expander is HTML snippets. And I don't know whether anybody here does any kind of HTML coding, but the syntax is, if, if you only use it a little bit, it's maybe in some ways is more useful because it's easier to remember uh, or to use uh, the Text Expander snippets than it is to remember the long annoying syntax. For example, if you want to put a link on a web page, it's left bracket a space href equals quote and then whatever you're going to link to, like podfeet.com would go there, unquote, left bracket, you put the words you want to show, left bracket, slash, oh my gosh, it's a lot to do. If you type comma A, it'll type that in for you automatically. And it leaves the cursor uh, actually right where you need it. So let me, uh, let me drop in a line here. My charts are going to be all messed up. Comma A, <coughs> you see how it's, it's waiting, it's blinking right between the quote, quote so it's there ready wow. for me. And there's ways to create those kind of snippets yourself if you're better at it than I am. Uh, an image uh, that you want to drop in a web page, comma IMG, creates that one for you. They're super, super easy. And I don't think that's an added library. That comes with it? Is that right? You have to add it in. Oh, you do have to add it in. It's okay. Like okay, so it's just like autocorrect. Gene says that you add it in if you want it. If you don't need it, you don't need it. Did I get the one you wanted me to say, Don? No. Uh, <laughs> okay. The one I was going to point out is the symbol snippet library, which includes the command characters and the alt characters Ooh. and the ones we were looking at before. Yeah, so where's that? Uh, it was the, in the predefined group bit. Let's see. Plus. Oh, down. In the plus? Um, predefined group? Yeah, predefined group symbol snippets. Ooh, so we'll test it to see if it works without the... <coughs> no, uh, no. But it includes the, um, the command symbol and the alt symbol, so it's do CCMD. It'll paste oh, CCMD, and, and then it'll paste, paste... the command symbol for you rather than having to go to the keyboard view. So I'm going to repeat what Don just said for, for the audience here, is he said if you've got this set up and you want to put in the command key, if you, if you put that predefined group for um, symbol snippets, then you'll be able to type CCMD and you get the command key to come up. Yeah, it just, pop, it just pops up the symbol. Command symbol. It just pops up the symbol right in the text right where you are. Very nice. Okay, well, we learned another thing. <laughs> There's a woman in the front row going like this. She's really, really happy about this. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about filling in these forms. I'm going to show you how to actually do this. So um, you're going to log into SHIP Wi-Fi every day. You've got to put first name, tab, last name, tab, room number, tab, password, enter. 
every single time you want to get on the internet. It's getting really, really old. It was fun the first two or three hundred times, right? So let's create, let's create a form uh, to do it instead with one trigger. So I'm going to show you, you're going to start a new snippet. We're going to start in the upper left-hand corner. Down at the bottom of the screen, actually I think I better, I may have to flip back and forth a couple of times because I've already built it because it's kind of tedious to do the whole thing, but um, down here, let's see, we're going to do a new snippet. Down here, you see the cursor thing. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is fill in a form, and it's going to ask you there, do you want a single line field, a multi-line field, a pop-up menu, or an optional selection? So if it's a pop-up menu, you can even tell it how to toggle and choose it. But what we're going to do is a single line field, because they didn't put it all in one, it's a, it's a bunch of separate fields. So we'll go single line field, and then we're going to have it be first name, and then the default value we want to be uh, Allison. Let's see if my snippet works. No, it doesn't work inside it. That would be recursive. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. Oh, just, no, actually, just it's just first name. That's right. And I'll say done. And then for the next line, now we want a tab. So instead of doing a fill in and going to single line field, we're going to go to key and we're going to select tab. And actually, I'm going to copy that. And then we're going to go uh, and we're going to do that. Ah, just do the whole thing. Uh, let's see, fill ins, single line field. This time it's going to be last name. And click default value. Share it in. And I'm, I copied that so I could just paste it. I could do that key thing again, but just for the for the sake of brevity, we'll do this a little faster. Single line field. So this is going to be room. And I'm pretty sure I'm in room A, B, C, D. <laughs> Not that I think any of you would stalk me. And we'll paste in a tab. And then uh, next is going to be password. So even though I told Mike not to do that, I'm going to put in a password field. Oops. You can see how easy this is. I mean, I literally figured this out like an hour before we got together. Let's see, not my password. That's what we'll do is the password. And I'll hit done. And now the last thing you want to do is you want to hit enter, right, to hit, to, to hit the button. So I'm going to go back to key, and I'm going to hit uh, enter or return. All right, now i got to name it. Let's call this uh, comma login. Let's see if that works, if I didn't use that already today. Okay, good. So I always tab away from it, or tap away from it before it actually fills it up here, but you can see that. So I'm going to turn on my Wi-Fi, which I probably should have done sooner, and get that annoying pop-up window. Uh, so when that comes up, all I'm going to do is type comma login and then hit one button to hit OK to actually enter it. By the way, Gene, have, have I done anything inefficiently here? Was there a better way to do it? How about the way Safari does it with autofill? Um, well, yeah, you could do things like that, uh, set up an autofill. But if you're only on the ship for 14 days, do you want to bother doing that? I don't know. It's up to you. Well, you can. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can have, have things autofill. Oh, no, it's not here. No. Oh, wait, there it is. Come on, come on, baby. It's going to be really boring it's if you're weak. not working right now. It's working. Just that it's on pace. If you open up a, um, like a text edit page, you can see you it. it. Okay. You got it. Idea. All right. It won't be as beautiful as it, <laughs> as it really should be. But. And there's something else I didn't want showing. <laughs> that will be edited out of the video. We'll do it in Bean here. All right, so I'm going to type, what did I say, comma login, right? Yep. Oh, and then it'll come up. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and we're going to dance. We're going to vamp. Any questions while we're waiting for this to come up? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can do it here, and then when it, when it comes up, oh, except that thing's so annoying. It stands in front here. So let's see. I was going to type comma login, right? So the thing came up when I typed it. That's the little window. It's going to come up with oh, there, the default. You got it. And then if I clicked OK, we'll do it twice. We'll click OK. There it is. So let's do it here. So we're going to do returning user. And I'm just going to take comma login. And the form comes up, and I click OK. Boom. It's done. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's going to fail, of course, because that's all fake information. So I'll go ahead and uh, get rid of this. Don't save. I want to turn Wi-Fi off so it leaves me back alone. 
So I, I wanted to show you that because um, it was this was a learning curve for me this morning, and like I said, I'm not that sophisticated of a user, and yet I was able to figure out in just a few minutes how to get that to work. So uh, a couple more bonus prizes you get with Text Expander is it syncs with Dropbox. So if you use multiple Macs, you can have your snippets available on all your Macs. So there was a sync uh, button in the system prefer in the preferences we were talking about. Um, here's another interesting thing. Let's say you're stuck using Windows. There's an application Windows. called Brevi from 16software.com. Um, it's, it's not as elegant as, as uh, Text Expander, to be honest, because it's a Windows program. But uh, Patrick from 16software.com uh, is also very, very responsive. And the Text Expander folks from Smile Software and, uh, Bre and uh, 16 Software, they got together and said, hey, we're never going to write a Mac application. We're never going to write a Windows application. Why don't we share snippets between us? And then everybody gets to play. So you can actually share your snippets between your Windows uh, PC and your Mac, and everybody gets happy. Wow. So in case you doubt how much I use this, whether it's really true, I, uh, they give you your statistics so you can see how much you're actually Woo! using it. In a 12-month period, I saved 221,354 characters, expanded 9,259 snippets, saving 12 and a half hours. That's at 60 words a minute. If I type slower than that, it's more hours, right? <laughs> so if you write 30 words a minute, you're even, uh, even faster, so, or even more time saved. So I mean, I literally saved a half a day of my life that I didn't waste typing. Wow. That's, that's real stuff, right? That's real me. So to get uh, Text Expander, it's $34.99. And uh, again, I am not advertising for Gene. I am, uh, this is just right from the heart, the most useful thing I can use to, uh, to actually speed me up. So if you have any questions about Text Expander, Gene McDonald is in the audience, and she knows way, way, way more than I do. And I'm guessing there's some people in the audience who do as well. So with that final word, uh, any yeah. final questions? Text Expander is a third party vendor? Yeah, Text Expander is from a company called Smile at smilesoftware.com. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's third party. You buy it for $34.99 from the Mac App Store. Uh, or you can uh, you can buy it directly from them, but if you buy it through the Mac App Store, obviously you get to use it on all your Macs. Does it work on iOS? Does it work on iOS? Yes, there is an iOS version of it as well for the uh, iPad and the iPhone. Is there another question there? I was just going to say, I brought. Um the download, you know, I can give people downloads. Oh, Gene brought the download, so you can test it out while you're here. Download it on the 25 cents a minute. I download, you can download instead of <laughs> using the 25 cents a download. Works. I mean, you can totally use it for 30 days without any restrictions. Oh, wow. You can use it for 30 days without restrictions, so you can find out if you like it. No, no, uh, no penalty. Very cool, Gene. That was a good idea. She's been on the ship before. <laughs> any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much for coming.